Greetings, Flushy Mammals, and welcome back to another Mortal Kombat 11 video. Today, we're going to be discussing what's next for Mortal Kombat 11. I don't have any leaks for you guys, because let's be honest here, 90% of the leaks that are put out here on YouTube, on Twitter, 4chan, Reddit, wherever, these leaks, 90% of the time, they end up being fake anyway, so we're not going to be talking about leaks, we're just going to be talking about the facts and what we know for sure. From there, we can kind of predict and kind of speculate what's going to happen in the future for Mortal Kombat 11. Now this video is going to be broken up into pieces just so that way I can keep things a little bit organized. So first things first, let's talk about something simple, the anniversary. Choose your destiny. Flawless victory. The Mortal Kombat 11 anniversary. Now that's actually coming up pretty damn soon. The anniversary is April 23rd. For the first anniversary, all that we really got was like little tweet on Twitter from the Mortal Kombat Twitter account. But the big thing was that we actually ended up getting the aftermath announcement two weeks after the first anniversary. Now this isn't to say that we're gonna get something on the anniversary day, but when the anniversary happens, I believe there is a certain time frame for things to be announced for Mortal Kombat 11. But that's not all. There's actually something else releasing very, very close to the second anniversary of Mortal Kombat 11 that is also Mortal Kombat related, and that is the Mortal Kombat movie for 2021. It actually releases April 16th, which means that we could possibly get a skin pack for the Mortal Kombat movie and now I'm not really gonna get into specifics as to who the characters are and like who's gonna get a skin that doesn't really matter all that we know is that the Mortal Kombat movie comes out April 16th and the anniversary is April 23rd so we can kind of just infer that something is going to be announced between early April to early May that's kind of the time frame that we're looking at that's kind of what I'm thinking but let's move on to something a little bit more important Roster slots. Now, this is a huge, huge thing, especially for fighting games. As we know, NRS is not in the business of leaving slots unfilled, as they did actually fill out every single slot that was data mined for Mortal Kombat X. Now, this is actually a pretty old tweet that I'm going to put up from the Thinny. Right here, boom, it reads, the total number of character slots in Mortal Kombat 11 is 42. In MKX, all the slots were predetermined since launch, and all of them were occupied down the road. So we do know that NRS does fill out all the slots. So currently in Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, there's actually 37 total characters on the roster right now. Meaning that according to this tweet, that would mean that there is five slots left. However, like I said, this is actually a pretty old tweet um, from the Thinny, the data miner, who has pretty much been correct about literally everything so far. And there's actually an updated tweet where he says that there are more slots and they have been rearranged, meaning that there could possibly be more than five characters coming in the future. Now, if this is indeed true, this actually lines up with what NRS was trying to tell us when the game launched and that they were going to support this game for many years to come. Basically, he's trying to say that they were going to support the game longer than their usual games, which if they were to drop support now, that would actually be false because then we'd already be moved on to the next game. And seeing as we don't even have a hint of what the next game is, I'm inclined to believe that we're probably going to see a couple more years of Mortal Kombat 11, which actually gets me a little bit more excited, considering that now we know that there are more than five slots available on the roster. Let's talk about the next topic. NPC and characters. Now this is going to be a bit of a hybrid section for the video. Uh, we're just going to be talking about this really, really quick, so just bear with me, okay? The NPC. Hint, okay? Hint in quotations because this could just literally be nothing. However, a lot of people are talking about this, so I might as well talk about this hint, quote, hint, as well. So, Ed Boon actually tweeted out saying, Most congested slash traffic cities, New York, Philly, Chicago. Now, if you take the first letter of all of these cities... NPC. And a lot of people are speculating that this could mean that we're going to be getting non-playable characters for the next combat pack. 
Now, I do have some speculation as to who these characters could be and which characters are definitely going to be added sometime in the near future. The first two characters that I, of course, got to be talking about, that is Sektor and Cyrax. Now, these two are very likely to end up on the roster at some point in the future. And the reason why I believe this is that Sektor and Cyrax both have dialogue with the DLC characters. So not only do they have dialogue files that correlate to the story mode, but they also have dialogue correlating to DLC characters. Now, this is very odd considering that they don't actually interact with any of the DLC char characters throughout Aftermath or the original story. So that's pretty interesting. But the next little bit is even more interesting. Both characters, in fact, do have character select icons. Now, this would essentially mean that they are in the character select screen in the files. And the next little bit is just for Sector because we don't really have much information for Cyrax in this specific aspect. But Sector actually does have a confirmed tower ending file. So essentially what this means is that Sector himself does have a tower ending for the classic towers. So if you go through the arcade, you can get a tower ending. Sector does in fact have one in the files, meaning that Sector is super, super likely to show up in the roster at some point in the near future. So Sector and Cyrax are super, super likely to end up on the roster at some point in the future. The next character that I really think sh would be on the roster is Ermac. The reason why that I think that is because, of course, he is an NPC, but he also has a brand new design. Why bother giving Ermac a brand new design just to kill him off in the crypt? Honestly, it makes zero sense to do that, and it's actually kind of a waste of resources, considering that the other two people that are in the crypt as well are actually rocking reused designs, those being Reptile and Kenshi, which I'll talk about later. But so far, Ermac seems more likely because he has a brand new design. NRS probably won't let the new design go to waste, so that's why I'm thinking Ermac, especially because, again, he's an NPC. Now, the next one is a little bit tricky, and that is Kronika. Kronika does have character select voice lines with the Raiden announcer pack. Kronika. So it seems like she will be playable at some point in the future. And on top of that, she does have a power ending in the files as well, which was very, very interesting that I found that out. I did not think that Kronika would be playable at any point in time. And just so that way you guys know, if a character has an ending file in the arcade, that doesn't necessarily confirm or deny anything, but it seems much more likely if they do have one. So those are actually four characters that are NPCs that I do think will make it into the game at some point in time and will be playable. The next few characters are actually a little bit iffy. I do not know if any of these three characters are going to make it. But let's talk about it anyway. Reptile. Reptile is in fact in the game and I believe you get to kill him in the crypt. However, he is rocking his MKX design, so unless they redesign the character for MK11, I doubt he'll make it, but we'll see what happens. They could make a brand new design for Reptile and just replace the model in the crypt, or just leave the crypt model as is and just move along. That's, that's pretty much it. Reptile seems a little bit more unlikely, but it's still possible. Next up, Fire God Liu Kang. Now, Fire God Liu Kang and just normal Liu Kang just... It's having two of them doesn't seem right. However, Fire God Liu Kang actually does have character select voice lines in the game as well. Fire God Liu Kang. Again, same way that Kronika does with the Raiden announcer pack, which is weird. So we could possibly see a Fire God Liu Kang as a separate playable character from just regular Liu Kang. And finally, the last character. Kenshi. Now, Kenshi, I feel like, is the least likely to pop up out of any of these characters due to the fact that he is, in fact, dead in the crypt, although so is Ermac, but he also has zero interaction in the game whatsoever. Like, when you find Kenshi in the crypt, he's already dead, there is no interaction whatsoever, you literally just take his blindfold and then move along with your day, and then on top of that, he is also rocking his MKX design, so not only does he have zero interaction with the player whatsoever, He's also dead, and he's and he's using his old design. So, I'm not too confident that Kenshi will make it into the game at all, but we'll wait and see and see what happens. But generally, that's 
pretty much it for the characters. Now let's talk about something very, very small, but also pretty important. Fight. Yep, crossplay. Crossplay is the final section for this video, and it's a pretty short and sweet one. Crossplay is still in beta. Yep, that's right. Crossplay to this day in 2021 is still in its beta stage meaning that NRS actually does have to finish this feature before they can move on to the next game. Now, this could happen with just a simple update and they just say, oh, it's not in beta anymore, yay. But it's more likely that they're probably going to finish the feature and we could maybe, hopefully, someday see crossplay between the PC, Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, whatever. Just all the all the platforms all just merge together someday, probably nearing the end of the game's lifespan. But as far as it goes right now, crossplay is still in beta, and for NRS to actually properly move on, I would think that they need to finish that feature before they move on. So yeah guys, that is it for this video. What do you guys think? Do you guys think Mortal Kombat 11 is dead? Do you guys think there's gonna be more on the way? Do you guys think they're gonna be supporting the game for years to come? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, let me know which characters you guys wanna see in future combat packs and whether or not you guys think we're gonna be getting some Mortal Kombat movie skins. Cause again, that would be pretty damn cool. I really want that new Sub-Zero design as I am a huge Sub-Zero fan, I am really hoping that we do get that new costume, but let's see. Let's see what happens. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. It's been casual.